How would I describe the 90s? Vitamin water and cocaine. How would I describe the 2000s? Vitamin water and less cocaine. people don't realize about me is I didn't go to art school. The art schools came to me. What does that mean? I don't know what that means exactly. But what I do know is that it's the thought that counts. And when you're in a position like I am, it's, it's the thought that, that really matters. I've shown my work in Tokyo, Berlin, Paris, even Sudan, Uganda, these, these third world countries, they just, they came out in droves. They don't have food or water or could even understand the Western references. They still, whole villages just showed up at my shows. And I think it's just a little testament, just a little testament to how much my work connects with people on this basic, instinctual level. So I'm going to start by showing the viewers at home some of my more revered pieces. Um, I call this one Rocket Wiener. It, uh, God, it was just so gloriously received uh, at its debut in Barcelona last year. Um, the accolades just mounted up. Uh, sold for over $48,000 at auction. Um, went on auction at Christie's last spring. The you know people who came out to my shows, they just seemed to love it. Moving on, we have what I call Super Misha. It's a, it's a labor of love. Um, put a lot of effort into this piece. It's a zoomed-in halftone of Misha Barton's eye with a Superman comic staple to it. Again, brought in well over $200,000 at auction. Moving on, we have Comic Catastrophe, parentheses, French Toast. And this one, again, brought in close to seventy grand at auction. God, can you imagine how much it's going to be worth when I'm dead? True, true fact, uh, Paul McCartney had his eye on it at the debut show and he was looking to buy, you know Paul McCartney, the guy from Wings and that other band. How do I balance family and work? I'd say, well, I'm recently divorced. Um, me and my wife, we met in 2007. I was backing out, leaving Gold's Gym, and she was backing out as well. And I get into a fender bender with the car behind me, because I mean, let's face it, Women can't drive. And so, you know, I get out of the car and I say to her, Hey, what if, how about I smash into you again this time next week if you know what I'm saying? God, she, she loved that line. And, you know, two months later we were married. And after that it just kind of slowly fell apart. Uh, something about she never really loved me. She needed to stay in this country. Uh, I, I didn't catch it all. It's, it's in the divorce papers. So yeah, I'd say my divorce was just a casualty of genius, really. But back to your original question, who are my influences? My influences, um... I'd like to say Rauschenberg, Lichtenstein, Warhol to a small extent. I think, I think they all learned a lot from me. This is a piece I did for the Haiti effort. My friends at White Noise Gallery just called me up and they said, Perry, we're doing a show for Haiti, do you want to put anything in? So, after seeing what was happening down there on TV for weeks, I said, sign me up, let's go, let's do it, I'm ready. I came up with this, and thinking back on the show and the whole experience, the thing that just tears me up inside still, just knowing all that everyone in the whole situation was going through, is that at the end of the day, they wanted me to donate the money, and you know, awareness is one thing, but that's my 30 grand. We're moving back to my minimalist roots here with this piece called Sunshine. Um, and it recently sold to Mel Gibson, wonderful man. Right here, uh, this piece was a huge deal for me last year. It, it kicked ass last year at Sotheby's, brought in $418,000. The New York Times called it a pop art triumph. It made Guggenheim's choice list. I got several grants because of it. 
even nominated for a Grammy Award, and I'm still not even really sure how that happened. Um, so yeah, this big deal last year. Um, can only move on and up from now, because that's really the Perry Galloway lifestyle. Bigger and better each year, till we form a more perfect union. Now, for this last part of the segment, I think it would be inappropriate of me to neglect letting you meet my assistant. Um, it's a big part of the operation. I got Adolfo uh, when my last assistant, he died on the job. He was a homophiliac, and... He was cutting out a stencil one day, and he cut his finger, and as he's screaming, get me to a hospital, get me to a hospital, I just told him to toughen up. So, you know, you live, you learn. Anyways, follow me, and we can meet Adolfo. I make him work in the dark because the idea of working in the light is kind of an incentive for him. So, come on. There he is. Hey, Adolfo. Oh, hello. Yeah? Alright Adolfo, I told you you only hand me these when it's dry. Why don't you pick your fucking ears up and you only hand me this shit when it's dry. Why don't you blow on it? You know, how many times have we been over this shit? I'll do it. Fuck it, I'll, I'm calling. You know, you know I have INS connections. No, no. You, I've told you about that shit 20 fucking times. Yeah. Hey, third ring. You better straighten... You better straighten this shit up, or you're, you, you can just fucking hightail it back to Germania. I'm gonna leave a message. And really, you know, we're all here in this world to help other people. Um, I feel if you're as fortunate as I am, you should use your resources and the ability you have to help other people, just like I'm doing with Adolfo. Um, I found him through my foundation, actually, the Perry Galloway Foundation, which I use to help people just like Adolfo, same situation, same backgrounds, to really get a head start and a good footing in, once they're in our country. Um, I feel like I've been blessed, and I really just have a calling to help other people in this way. Let's face it. I'm, I'm an icon. Uh, I am a piece of the culture that I represent in my work. For instance, if I want to make a piece, a painting, of Mickey Mouse urinating on an Apple computer while I'm in the background single-handedly stopping the Rodney King beatings, then I can do that. That's, that's a status that I've earned, being an icon. Do you want to know what else? means to be an icon? Do you, want, do you want to see a little token of what it means to be an icon and live an icon status? This. Yeah. That's me and Gaga off the coast of Santa Monica last month. What, what do you have in your wallet? Pictures of your friends, your family, your dog? That's what I have. No cash. No IDs. That's just a little taste of my lifestyle. What do I think the afterlife will be like? Well, I think I'll look God in the eye and he'll say something to me like, hey, Perry, you've blessed other people with your resources. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>